Hi, so welcome to today's video. So today I'm going to go through line diagrams. So I'm going to draw up a compound and we're going to name it based on the line diagram. So this is the structure we're going to look at today. So its functional group is an alcohol. So this will be a high priority functional group. So my numbering on my carbon chain will start next to this functional group. So remember when you're looking at the line diagram, the points are carbons and it's got hydrogens attached to it. So if I look at this point here, I've got two lines coming out of it. So one line going to this OH functional group and another line going to another carbon. So because a carbon will make four bonds, it doesn't hold lone pairs on it, so we know it's going to make four bonds. It's got two bonds coming out of it. So it means that there's another two hydrogens that we're not seeing that are actually represented within this line diagram. So we've got two extra hydrogens here. Here's another carbon. It's got two lines coming out of it, so it's got another two hydrogens. Here's another carbon. It's got a line coming off it. So this single line represents a carbon with three hydrogens coming off it because it's already got one bond and another three would take it up to those four bonds that it needs to have. This carbon here has the CH3, it has this carbon and it has another carbon. So it has another hydrogen as well. This carbon here has two carbon groups and a chlorine or chloro when you're naming and therefore it would have another hydrogen that's attached there. This one here has two hydrogens because it's got two lines coming out of it already. And this one here, it's just hanging by itself, the same as this one up here. So that represents a carbon with three hydrogens attached. So it's got the line and three more hydrogens. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go through and draw in those hydrogens just so that you know that they're there. I'll draw it in a different color. So I've drawn in the hydrogens and I've tried to draw them in very light and small so they don't take away from that line diagram. So just that's what we're representing here when we're looking at this line diagram. Okay, so let's get into naming this line diagram. So the first thing we do with naming is we circle the longest continuing chain of carbon atoms and we want to keep the functional group on that main chain if you would like. So the longest continuing chain of carbons would be this one here. So this long continuing chain of carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in that chain. So six carbons, remember one is meth, two is F, three is prop, Four is butte, five is pent. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're coming in at a hex. Now they're all single bonds, single bonds that are going between each of those carbons. So it's a hexane. So I put the an. I don't write that E in there because I have a functional group there and it's an alcohol, so I write OL. So hex, the number of carbons, and the connection between those carbons, and ol is the functional group that's there. So hex and ol. And that's accounting for this alcohol and this backbone. I have extra things coming off it. I have this group up the top here. And I've got this chlorine here. So this group up here is a one carbon. It's coming off the main chain, so it's a methyl. And this one here is a chloro. So when I'm looking at this, this will be my carbon number one, two, three, four, five, six. So my methyl is off carbon three and my chloro is off carbon four. Now the reason this is carbon one is because that's where the alcohol is attached and it's the highest priority. So my numbering needs to start from the carbon attached to that alcohol. So putting all the pieces together, these are just alphabetical. So it will be four chloro, 
3-methylhexanol. So 4-chloro, 3-methyl, 3-methylhexanol. So that's one with a functional group that has a high priority. So I'll wipe this out and let's have a go at just a simple alkane or an alkene. So let's have a go at an alkene with the line diagram. So this example here, I've got an alkane backbone with two double bonds. So I've actually got two alkenes in here. So it's a dialkene. I've got a bromo group and I've got two fluorines, which are fluoro groups. So when I'm numbering this one, I want to, first of all, circle the longest continuing chain of carbon atoms that have these alkenes in there. And then I want to work out which end I'm going to number from. So let's circle it first and count out the carbons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight carbons would give us our oct. And they've, it's not an alkane chain now. We've got these double bonds in there. So it's an octaene, but it's a diene. So let's, we need to go on to numbering now. So if I number from this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I can label these double bonds. So you put the smallest number, so it's going from three to four, so it'll be a three, and a five to six will be a five. So I've got a three, five, diene. If I number the other way, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have the smallest number, I've got a three, five diene. So what this is telling me is that if I number from left to right or right to left, I'm still getting a three, five diene that's occurring. So it doesn't matter in terms of the double bond. So now what I wanna do is look at the substituents that are coming off. So the sum of the substituents need to be the lowest possible number. So I've got two fluorines off here and a bromine off here. So if I go with my blue numbering, so from this side all the way, I get a four bromo, seven difluoro. So I've got a four bromo and a seven, seven difluoro. Now, if I go with my green numbering, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I've got a two, two difluoro, a two, two difluoro, and I've got a five bromo. So there are my options. So when I'm looking at these two options, this one here, I've got a three, five, a two, two, and a five. Here, I've got a three, five again, but this time I've got a four and a seven, seven. So if I get out my calculator and I add seven plus seven plus four and see what value I get, and I go two plus two plus five and see what value I get, you would get a smaller sum of the one that I've done in the green color. So the top one would have the smaller sum. So that would be the correct way of naming this compound. So if we put this all together, we've got a oct, diene, um, octa, octadiene, and we've got a three, five. So sorry, getting my commas and dashes mixed up. Let me fix that up. So it's an octadiene, and I've got a three dash, a uh, comma, five onto that. Um, dash octadiene. Now to put my things out the front, so F and B alphabetically, so it'd be a 5-bromo, 2-2-difluoro, uh, two, 3-5-octadiene. Two, so it's, it's quite a complicated one that we've chosen here for this example. And remember, when we're doing the alphabetical order, we don't do the di or the tri, we do the actual name of the functional group. So that's why my, I went with the F and not the D when I was working out the alphabetical order of the substituents that go out the front. So this is how we would do this line diagram. 
So going from the line diagram into the IUPAC name. So thank you for watching this video and stay tuned to watch another one.